Well, hello, hello, friends and family. How is everybody doing today? It's such a wonderful day today. We're enjoying a little bit of rain here in Bedford, and it's so beautiful outside. We're just uh, loving all that good stuff that the Lord's given us. It's because he, as he promises, to cause the rain to fall on the just and unjust. You know, that's the Lord's blessing. So many times people will uh, say that that could be a curse. See how the Lord causes rain to fall upon the just and the unjust? Well, if you want to see a curse from the Lord, just wait for a drought to come. That's when the real problem starts. Um, so the rains of God are his blessings. And he's so good, he causes the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust. Those that believe in him and those that don't. Amen. That's good news, right? Well, I hope this day is finding everybody well. I sure am missing everybody. I just want to say hello to all my congregation and family. Can't wait till the day comes. We all get to gather together and sing hallelujah to the Lord. But this is just one more way we can come and enjoy each other's company. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's uh, feeling well, too, as you're, as you're joining. I just want to say hi to you. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to hit those likes and share after we're done. If you don't mind, let's get this word out to just one more if we can. And here we are walking through the book, taking a dive, quick dive in the book and looking at John chapter 6. John chapter 6 is a little lengthy, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Because as we promised, to keep it short and sweet. That we can just, uh, you know, this is not something that will be too difficult to do or to uh, begin with or enter into. And I'm looking to see if I can follow you a little better on the computer, but it doesn't come up on mine as I'm, I'm doing this live. So this is a some more learning curve here. <laughs> um, but anyway, I trust that you guys will speak with each other. Hey, if anybody listening and sees somebody that comes on and needs prayer, I want to just uh, give a quick shout out to my prayer team and my Mia, if she's able to get on and, and to listen to, uh, to talk to each other and to love each other and pray for each other as we're going. Um, this is what it's all about. You know, we, uh, we join hands together and help lift one another up and pray for each other. And keep each other strong in the Lord. Amen. Well, let's take a quick dive into John chapter 6. Y'all ready? Here we go. After these things, and here more things are, are we're getting ready to rejoice over. But Jesus continues on. And he, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. There's something to think about there for a moment. But he went up on the mountain, went to that high place, sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, again, this is the second time that John has mentioned the Passover. So now we know that they're coming to a complete full year, or maybe this would be the second year. But the Feast of the Jews was near. And therefore, Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, look at all these, this crowd he's seeing, right? He says, Philip, where are we to buy bread so that all these may eat? This was, uh, this he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. You ever feel like somebody's giving you a loaded question? Asking you a question, but they already know the answer. You like you're being set up. <laughs> I wonder if Philip kind of recognized that was going on, but he answered him honestly. Philip answered him and he said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for, ever, for everyone to receive even a little. That's a lot of, that's a lot of folks. And that probably was a lot of money back then. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, um, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. Well, there's a start, right? But what are these for so many people? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now, look at that there, too. There's something interesting there. We'll come back to it. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. 
Jesus then took the loaves, and having given thanks, gave glory to God, he distributed to those who were seated, likewise also of the fish, as much as they wanted. And then when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. They were completely and utterly amazed. I know I would have been too, right? Well, let's go on back up there again. I think... Uh, Verse 9, it said, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. And we remember that good old story, that amazing story that Jesus did that incredible work. And here, I'm going to turn this to, there we go. Where Jesus did that incredible work and that credible miracle there when he fed the, the thousands. And for just... A few fish and some loaves of bread, just some tiny loaves of bread, was able to feed everybody out of that. Speaks volumes to us, doesn't it? And to step up and just to give whatsoever that we have reminds us to be faithful in our giving. Not only in our monetary things, but in time and talent as well. And as we are giving faithfully, the Lord can use and do much with little. Don't ever forget that. Number two, it's amazing to me how he took just a little bit of bread and how we're looking today in just a little bit of bread, just a little sliver of bread, just John chapter 6, and how it can fill us to overflowing that we'll have more than we need. And you know, those little fish, I love that that fish also were in the menu it wasn't just bread, but it was also fish that was in the menu, a living thing. And we know that in the last day, the Lord's coming. He's going to be separating. The angels are going to come and separate the good fish from the bad fish, the, the goats, sheep from the goats, and wheat from the tares. All of these things, you know, they're going to be separating us and seeing who is faithful and who's unfaithful. Who's the those who are truly following the Lord and those who are not. But the fish, then, we, we understand, represents men, and then the good fish are the believers. So this fish was good enough that could be used. So we see that it was good fish, and then that means the Lord can take a little bit of bread with faith by those who believe him and do mighty miracles, some mighty works. Is that remarkable? That's awesome, right? Somebody say amen. <laughs> Uh, it that gives me a uh, just a moment to shout for a second. I just love that. And also, too, he said, now have the people sit down. Have everybody sit down because there was much grass in the place. You know, it takes me back to Psalms 23. That good shepherd is going to lead us to a place of still waters. And right, the, the uh, beautiful meadow as we sit down and, and just sit with him at rest. Green pastures. So now, as they sat down, there's much grass in that place. And so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Praise the Lord. You imagine having a following like that. Well, Jesus then took the loaves and having given thanks, praised the Lord. He gave thanks to God, the provider of all things. They didn't worry about having enough money to go and buy all that bread. They put it all together and give it to God and say, God, we're just trusting you to do something with this. And he knew exactly what he was going to do. And he is the creator of all the earth, too. Without him was nothing made that was made. So he did it with a grin, I would imagine, knowing exactly as he lifted that up and began to praise the Father. As they began to distribute these things, Here's something beautiful. Watch this. Jesus then took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated. Likewise, also of the fish, as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted. Amen. You can feed to your fill on the bread of life. So they gathered them up 
and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Now we, we see a few things in that. That one old adage comes to mind is waste not, want not, right? We're not wasting the things of the Lord. We're not wanting much either. If we're making good use for all that he has set before us, we have to remember everything that we need, most of the time we already have it if we'll just take a moment and look around. Number two, they took up the, the basket and they were able to, I'm sure, Keep eating on that. You know, they continued. They took it with them. So this was going to be leftovers to help them, help to sustain them on their way. And then also, it says, and filled 12 baskets full with fragments from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Those who had believed had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, this truly is a prophet. They understood that he was being blessed and was walking in the power of God. Amen. This is a beautiful thing. One more thing, testifying that he is the Christ, the Messiah. Well, you know, there's one more point, too, that we can make, is that the disciples, as they took up those fragments, that's another way that we can consider taking up the fragments of our life, the things that we have gone through and counting our blessings, remembering what God has done. If we'll just stop for a moment, we think, oh, how am I going to get to tomorrow? Well, let us look back and remember what God has brought us through, all the things that God has done for us in our life. That gives us a reason to shout amen, right? <laughs> you got to love that. Hi, everybody. It's just joining us. Love to see you. Well, this is a beautiful thing. But now, after all this it had happened, they said, oh, yeah, we want this to be our guy. Now, Jesus perceived, we're in verse 15, that they were intending to come and take him by force to make him king. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, you know, it kind of reminds us of another story. It, but <clears throat> since he perceived that, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. And after getting into a boat, they started to cross the sea to Capernaum. It had already become dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea began to be stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. And then... When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat, and they were frightened. You know these old fishermen, superstitious back in the day. <laughs> a lot of them still are. You can't whistle on a boat. You know, you, a lot of them, you, there's a lot of superstitions and stuff, but, but they, they were frightened because the story is a lot of them thought that they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Oh, man. You know, when the Lord says, don't be afraid, do not fear. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? You can just take rest and take ease. I speak peace to you all right now. If anybody's dealing with anxiety or fear or any trouble, understand that the Lord is in the midst of the trial and he can do the impossible. He's going to see us through no matter what. He'll see us through this COVID thing. So I speak peace to you in the name of Jesus. I pray you'll receive that in faith, every one of you, and pass it on. If you see others that are walking in fear or worried about other things, who knows what? Now, you know, there, I know there are a lot of folks that maybe have lost their job. God can see you through this situation, too. They're, just keep believing Him and praying. And if you guys or anybody's needing prayer for anything, be sure to just put something up. Let us know. If there's any way we can pray or help or in any way, shape, or form, we'll sure do it. But we got to know in order to be able to do it. But the Lord said, do not be afraid, it is I. Then 21, so they were willing to receive him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at land to which they were going. You know, John cuts the story short. And we know that Peter says, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come out and walk on the water and help me. I want to do the impossible too. <laughs> and the Lord says, come on. And here he jumps out, you know. Well, that's for another day, but that's an exciting thing. But God, 
Here he is doing the amazing, doing the impossible. I want to note this for a second. Look how all of creation rushed to hold him up. Who knows how he covered that, but his creation wouldn't let him fall. That Man, that just speaks volumes to me. So they were willing to receive him into the boat when they saw that it was him. How often when we know that it's him, when we know that his way is the right way and even he can do the impossible, we are quickly willing to receive him into our life too. I pray that each and every one of you will do are doing that very thing today. And the next day, the crowd that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other small boat there except one, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples into that boat, but that his disciples had gone away alone. They're little investigators. They're all looking to see what's going on. Well, we remember this story. We remember that had happened. Well, there came other small boats from Tiberias near the place where they ate the bread after the Lord, had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the small boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get over here? Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, or for the food which, is in, which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Amen. That's a quick uh, opportunity right there to take a pause. It's because so many times I've seen people hearing you know, they're lost in the world or they know the challenge in their in their life in one way or another and will cry out to God. They'll try God on and they want to put God on and put God in their life to see if they can get the better life that everybody, so many people have promised. So many times the, the, the modern gospel says, come to the Lord. He'll give you all these wonderful things, a new hope and a love and joy and a new car and a new house. And then ultimately find out that the enemy fights them with all his might. And the first thing they see is they have trouble. their persecution, tribulation, trouble and pain, suffering and trial. So they're quickly offended. And then they say, you know what? I ain't going to do that anymore. They feel foolish for even thinking about it because it didn't work for them. And then they, they go back their own way. Well, the problem was is they put the Lord on for the wrong reason. And we all can be guilty of that. And But it's my hope that we'll put him on for the right reason. And that right reason is for eternal life. The Lord says, but, but for the food which endures to eternal life. Seek for that which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Now this is the reason to come to the Lord. It's that we will escape the judgment to come. For it is appointed once unto man to die, and then the judgment. So the moment we die, we go to stand before the Lord, and we're judged according to our thoughts, words, and our deeds. Are we still doing the things that's against God? Are we still even coming to the Lord, but still trying to hold on to some of our, our favorite habits and haunts and things of that nature? Anybody that names the name of Jesus has to turn from sin. And these are those who, who cease from sin, those that suffer in the flesh. <laughs> I remember back in the day when I had my addiction of smoking and I was even at the time was called in the ministry and I'm trying to, you know, go through all my studies and all the things that I have to do to become tenured and, and to be a, to uh, be ordained and all of that. Well, this was one thing that was hanging on and it takes a while to get through all your studies anyway. It took several years, but back in the time and even during the process, I knew in my heart that I had to separate from that. I couldn't continue in the ways of righteousness and still have that hanging on me. So I had to pray, Lord, please give me the strength. Help me to endure it. I can't do it on my own. Finally, when I became willing to suffer for him, 
regardless, I said, Lord, no matter if it kills me, I'm turning away from him, never going to touch this again. And Praise the Lord, he gave me the strength to keep my word to that. But the, the point is, all those who name the name of the Lord must cease from sin, must turn away from it. It's not that you'll earn your way by your works. It is that the evidence that's in you, that the, you belong to the Lord and he belongs to you, and the evidence of the Holy Spirit being you, that you have been born again, is that thing that is evidence that you have been set free. So we have to enter into that challenge. And guess what? He's worthy to suffer for. This is what is called carrying our cross. We have to be willing to pick up that cross and carry it with him. And that in this way, then he knows us and we can know him because we're crying out to him every day. Lord, give me the strength. Oh, help me get through this situation. Now, these are them who come to him and they say, Lord, Lord. And he doesn't say, depart from me. I never knew you. These are them that says, come, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And this is our reasonable service. And I pray that the Lord will give you strength right now to do everything that we have to do to enter in to that with him. And therefore, and we're at verse 28, I believe. Therefore, they said to him, what shall we do? so that we may work the works of God. Jesus answered, now this is pretty good stuff right here. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. Who's that? That's Jesus. Well, so what is believing? To hear his word and to do it. So they said to him, what then do you do for a sign? So that we may see, they're always seeking signs and wonders, and believe you. What work do we do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Whew, good stuff. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. And for the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Amen. And we know that he was the bread of life. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me. This scene, excuse me, verse 36. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly in no way cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me. Here it comes that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on that last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on that last day. Amen. <laughs> He's going to give us strength, and him himself is going to raise us up on that last day. Therefore, the Jews were grumbling about him because he said, I'm the bread of life that came down out of heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he, he now say, I have come down out of heaven? He came just the same way we did into the world, they think. Jesus answered and said to them, but we know he came from a virgin, right? Jesus answered and said to them, do not grumble amongst yourselves. No one can come to me except the father who sent me draws him. Amen. There's a key right there. Father. Draw my family. Lord, draw the, my friends. Lord, draw me unto yourself. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. 
your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. And this is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. Praise the Lord. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I give him for the life of the whole world is my flesh. Oh boy, this gets them all stirred up. But look at this. This is the bread of life. And as we are slicing this, as we are opening this up, as we begin to, to talk about it and to chew on it, we're pondering the things of God. We're kind of taking a taste. The Lord says, taste and see that I am good. So we're tasting on his word. We're eating on his word, you know. And then when we believe it, we swallow it down. After it's swallowed down, then it gives us strength. And it gives us life. And then we can work and, and move in faith. We have power and our, our spirit begins to grow strong. This is to eat the bread of life. And then also we know that he was talking about communion here very soon. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? <laughs> They're like, Boy, he's twisting our mind up. <laughs> this is even possible. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourself. I, I would have teetered on that. I just would have, what in the world? You're going to have to explain this to me, sir, because I'm having a hard time with it. And we see that the disciples did too. <laughs> <laughs> he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, it's even hard to read it, <laughs> abides in me, and I am him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, eats of my flesh, he also will live because of me. Amen. <laughs> this is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. We're in, and we know, we remember that on that day, Passover, when the Lord came and said, take and eat. And he broke the bread and he says, eat this. This is my flesh. Eat it in remembrance of me that I'm coming to die and to take your place on the cross for the sins of the world and drink. This is my blood. And when we do that, we remember his death until he comes. The day he comes, we're not going to have to worry about doing that anymore. We're going to enter into rejoicing with him. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Verse 16. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? Therefore, his disciples, <laughs> when they heard it, said, This is tough. How can, who can hear it? But Jesus, understanding that his disciples grumbled at this, said to him, Does this cause you to stumble? What then, if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. So they are a representation of the thing. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he was saying, for this reason, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. I pray that each and every one of you, even if you're struggling, even if you, you, you haven't yet decided if you're going to believe in the Lord or not, I pray that each and every one of you be given faith enough that be, you be drawn by the Lord to receive him and to receive his word and to understand it as truth. Understand that we have to receive his word in spirit or the flesh can't conceive of it. And... Everything that God has to say, that everything he says is truth, and it is life, and it is the way. <laughs> so in verse 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. 
Now, it's not the first 12 that he had talked about, but there were many who were, it, he was, they were growing in number. But because he talked about these things, they couldn't, excuse me, they couldn't receive it in, in the spirit because they had little faith or because they could not believe or weren't willing to wait and to see. How often do I see that happen? You know, when, when people are struggling with a situation, they say, no, I, I don't think I want to go this way, you know, and, and they'll turn, turn away from the Lord before he gives an, an excellent explanation and helps us to understand. It is the Holy Spirit that has to help us to understand the Word. And we pray every time I open this book, Father, I ask that you will open our heart, mind, and ears, and eyes, and just help us to see and help us to learn in the Spirit. Amen. Well, Simon Peter answered him, let's see. Okay. So many of the disciples, verse 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. So Jesus said to the twelve, you don't want to go away, do you? Also, Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. They were remembering all the things that he had done up to now. And they still struggled. They still struggled trying to understand. They hadn't come yet totally, completely in understanding. But they were learning little by little. And they stayed with him. See, that's the other key, friends. We have to stay with him. Don't give up. Don't quick, don't turn too quickly. Jesus answered them, Did I myself not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. He knew very good and well. He's looking for the fruits of the Spirit to see who believe and who don't. Now he meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Now we've gotten to chapter 7. Friends, I want to thank you guys for for stopping by with me today. It's always a treat, and, and it's just, um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to enter in and to sit down and enjoy this time with each other, especially since we can't gather together. But even after we can, I intend to keep this going. It is uh, challenging. Um, you know, every day you, you've got to prepare a little bit, you got to study a little bit, and we got to make sure that whatever we're bringing is sound and sound doctrine. Um, and that uh, we're walking in the right way. And as we continue to pray that God will bless this, I pray that everybody is touched by and anybody that feels fed here, that you will share this good news and help it to spread, help it to grow. Uh, any opportunity, this is your way of being able to witness too. If you can share anything that you see that you know is good teaching or good news going out, you know, and it, who knows, it may be that one thing that actually leads the one you've been praying for to a right place with God. Who knows if that one time of you being obedient to the Lord and just doing a share and a, doing a like, you know, is that one word that they needed to hear. We just don't know who God intends to use to help bring in the harvest or who God intends to use to plant or to water. But remember this, those who who plant and those who water and those who harvest, uh, none of these are anything, but it's God who brings the increase. So I pray that God will bless each and every one of you as, as you go forward and everything that you're doing in your world. And again, it's so good to see you. Thank you, thank you for stopping by. And <laughs> I wish I could read some of those comments while I'm talking, but uh, the way the phone works and all this works, it's I can't do it until after we're done. So... I just want you to know I love you and I appreciate you and thanks for your time. I know I've gone on a little longer than I usually intend to. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet so it, it doesn't get old and we can still have time to, to live life too. <laughs> but you guys have a good one and thank you for your time. God bless you and keep you and can't wait to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.